In the months that followed their victory at Deep Space Nine, the Dominion began to surge through Federation space, winning victory after victory and recovering from their losses at Taurus III far quicker than their enemy had hoped. By May of 2374, the Federation had been pushed to breaking point, their fleets were scattered and disorganized, and they'd received intelligence suggesting that the wormhole minefield would soon be disabled by the Dominion. Faced with the possibility of unlimited Dominion reinforcements and certain defeat, Captain Benjamin Sisko, now senior adjutant of the 7th Tactical Wing, formulated a last-ditch plan to retake Deep Space Nine and wrest control of the Bajoran wormhole back from the Dominion. In preparation for the attack, Sisko and Admiral Ross began to assemble a large force at Starbase 375. As a foundation, they used what remained of the 2nd and 7th fleet, whose casualties in the early war had reduced them to less than one-third strength. They supplemented this force by reassigning the far larger 5th fleet, who had previously been tasked with defending Vulcan and its surrounding worlds. Sisko also dispatched emissaries to the Klingon Empire to request additional forces, as well as summoning the 9th fleet from the Bolian front. But after new intelligence revealed that Dominion was less than one week away from disabling the minefield, Sisko was forced to launch the attack prematurely before the 9th Fleet or any Klingon warships could arrive. Upon arriving in system, the Federation Armada was organized into an elaborate formation built around powerful battle groups known as Galaxy Wings. These wings were each commanded by a wartime refit of the Federation Galaxy class and included a number of support vessels and fighter squadrons. The fleet's arrival at the edge of the Bajor system was quickly detected by the Dominion, and an opposing force of 1,254 ships was deployed in their path. Thankfully, the Federation's objective was not to destroy the Dominion fleet, but rather to fight their way through to Deep Space Nine and disable the station's deflector before it could be used to destroy the minefield. Nevertheless, the Federation was outnumbered 2 to 1, and it was obvious that victory would not be achieved without heavy casualties. In an attempt to break a significant enough force through the Dominion opposition, Captain Sisko ordered skirmishing forces of Federation attack fighters to probe and engage the enemy, but only to focus fire on Cardassian ships. Knowing that the Jem'Hadar element of the Dominion fleet would hold their position, and that due to the rushed nature of the attack, the combined efforts of Federation forces would ultimately not succeed in defeating the enemy outright, Sisko had hoped that by focusing exclusively on Cardassian ships, that he could lure them into breaking formation, and in doing so, provide a gap in the opposition for a force of Federation ships to break through and reach Deep Space Nine. Golden Cart recognized this ploy, however, but instead of merely ensuring that Cardassian ships were to hold their position, he ordered that an opening was to be feigned, with the intention of closing it and stranding any Federation ships that did somehow manage to break through. Sisko, whilst captaining the Defiant and accompanied by the Federation Miranda-class ships Majestic and SeaTac, took advantage of this opening as it arose, but was quickly overwhelmed and left without proper support. When all seemed lost, a force of Klingon ships made up of Vorture-class attack cruisers and Klingon birds of prey, led by General Martok and Lieutenant Commander Worf, arrived to provide assistance. Opening fire on pursuing Dominion ships and giving the Defiant the support it needed to break through the engagement and make haste to Deep Space Nine. In this success, however, the Defiant stood alone. Deciding that Deep Space Nine's defenses were ample enough to deal with a single Federation ship, along with the incoming fleet of Dominion reinforcements through the wormhole, Gul Dukat deemed that ordering pursuit of the Defiant was unnecessary. Moments away from being prepared to disable the minefield, a sabotage attempt was conducted by Rom and Major Kira Norris in order to disable Deep Space Nine's weapons. And whilst they were unsuccessful in achieving this prior to the destruction of the minefield, the sabotage did leave the station defenseless against the Defiant. Alone, and in the face of imminent arrival of a Dominion fleet consisting of thousands of Jem'Hadar ships, the Defiant entered the wormhole in a last-ditch effort to face the oncoming threat. Ultimately, it was thanks to the Prophets, who deemed that Sisko still had a role to play in forthcoming events, that the Dominion fleet was repelled. Using their celestial powers, they removed the fleet, allowing the safe return of the Defiant to the Alpha Quadrant, where alone it began its attack on Deep Space Nine. The Defiant would not remain alone for long, however, as word was received that over 200 additional Federation and Klingon ships had broken through the Dominion lines and were en route to the station. It was at this point that a full evacuation of Dominion and Cardassian personnel from the station was conducted, allowing Federation forces to once again reclaim control of Deep Space Nine. With the station back in the hands of the Federation, and the removal of Dominion reinforcements into the Alpha Quadrant, this did indeed represent a huge victory for the Federation. However, with significant opposition still lying in wait within Cardassian territory, still under the careful yet ruthless leadership of the Founders, 
this war was far from over. Thank you for watching Space Doc. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share for more science fiction spacecraft summaries. If you enjoy the channel, why not consider pledging your support on Patreon? For just $1 a month, you'll be able to access the Space Doc schedule to see what's coming up.